You see this right here? This is killing your testosterone's ability to play its role. So in this video, I'm going to be getting into 10 things that are endocrine disruptors that you could actively remove from your life. With that being said, I'm going to get this off and let's get straight into the video. Now, what is an endocrine disruptor? An endocrine disruptor is something that's preventing your endocrine or your hormone system from actually achieving what it wants. So it prevents your body from doing what it naturally should do, and it convinces your body that it has other things in it or it already has these things in it, and it just overall confuses or blocks certain roles within your body. The most common form of this is by blocking androgen receptors and your testosterone has to bind to these androgen receptors to actually play its role. So when you're having things in your life that's actively preventing your androgen receptors from doing its function, then what's going to happen is you're going to not see the benefits of your testosterone level. And even if you are optimizing your testosterone and you have high levels of testosterone, then it overall, it's not going to matter because you have all these other things inside of your body that your body thinks is testosterone, such as BPAs from plastic binding to your androgen receptors or phthalates. Now you may be wondering, how did I select these 10 things? And the reason is because I have a list of all the endocrine disruptors that need to be avoided and I selected the 10 most common that I see. Why do I have this list? I have this list because I have a vision of the future, a vision of when I'm married and having kids and have my own house. I don't want any of these plastics or any of these horrible chemicals to be in my family's life. So I want to have the option to put in more work to avoid these things and see the benefit for the rest of my life, see the benefits in my kid's life. And I have a woman that I'm with right now who's very supportive, loves all that stuff. I'm just telling you guys so you know that there are women out there who's very similar on the same journey as us. Not necessarily the same amount of improvement because posting about your improvement and all that isn't really a feminine trait, but women who do want a man to lead them and don't care for the modern day stuff, don't like degenerate stuff, and overall just want to live a more natural life. So that is out there, and I think that is a great test in seeing if you have a high-quality woman, seeing if they are a supporter of this right here, removing endocrine disruptors from your life. It says a lot about them. But with that being said, this video is not going too in-depth in the topic of what exactly is happening. I want to get straight into actionables that you can do. So I'm going to now start listing out the 10 things that you can do right now to reduce the amount of endocrine disruptors inside of your body. The first endocrine disruptor is air fresheners. Now, a lot of people have an air freshener in their car. They have an air freshener in their house. They have those things that plug into the wall and blow out the scent. All of those things are killing your testosterone. They have chemicals that are naturally going to prevent your body from producing testosterone and prevent your testosterone from playing its role. So what is the solution to this? The best solution to this is is to actually go ahead and replace it with something natural. Not too surprising. You could replace it with a wax candle, or you could also replace it with beeswax. Now, in your car, I recommend just keep your car clean, roll down the windows when it's warm out and there's no bad weather, and that's enough to keep your car smelling good. The next thing is plastic containers, and plastic containers you see very commonly. They're very common, yet... When you think about it, why would I be leaving my food inside of plastic, especially liquids and stuff where it covers the whole surface area? You're just asking for more microplastics to enter your body. So be really careful with, with plastic packaging. And if you have the option to, go ahead and get your food from local farms or farmer's markets so you could actually prevent that whole packaging process. Because when you think about it, how long do you think that food's been sitting inside of that plastic inside of the store? Probably a while. So if you have the option to, it's great to replace the source of food and just avoid the plastic all in general. 
If you're getting honey, then go ahead and get honey straight from honey farmers so you know you're getting the authentic honey that's actually going to increase your testosterone and not honey that has sugars and all these other things that's going to kill your testosterone. Just overall, getting your food away from plastics and more towards its natural source is really going to help you out. And not only that, but when you microwave or heat up food in plastic, say you have a plastic spoon or anything... All of that is going to really impact the amount of plastics in your food because heat is what is going to mainly do this. The next thing on this list is going to be nonstick pans, and this shouldn't come at a surprise to any of you because how do you avoid something sticking? You either use chemicals or you use some sort of fat. And in this case, if you're using some sort of fat, that fat isn't going to stay on the pan. So what's left over? Chemicals. And once again, you're using heat on these pans. And what does heat do? Heat speeds up the molecules and makes them more likely to transfer into the food that you are eating or consuming. So when you're cooking foods in these nonstick pans, then you really are just putting chemicals inside of your body. There is no point in not using some sort of fat source, such as butter or olive oil, something that is healthy, something that is going to promote your hormones. You just have to make sure your diet stays healthy in general. Most people assume that the fats that they're eating, if they're eating butter, then that's going to be what's making them fat. No, it's really what else you're eating. What are you cooking in butter? If you're cooking a steak in butter, do you really think the person eating steak every night for dinner cooked in butter is going to be fat? What type of person do you visualize? You likely visualize some sort of Spartan jacked warrior. If you're picturing somebody who eats steak every single night cooked in butter. Ah, I, I'd feel like a beast, I know that. But back to the point, make sure you do not have any non-stick pans in your life. The next thing I have for you is shampoos, body wash, lotion, anything that you put on your skin. Think of what exactly is in it and make sure you are checking that. So when you are putting this on your skin, make sure that it is all natural, make sure it is phthalate free, and make sure that it doesn't have any parabens or dyes in it. Now, all of this stuff is going to really screw with your body's function and you're directly putting it on your skin. So there's no argument to be made on this not being a negative if it has any of these. You're directly putting it on your skin, so your body is directly going to absorb it, and you're directly going to be negatively impacted by it. Now keep in mind, all of these things on the list work together. To see the difference, it takes time. You need to be able to allow your testosterone to play its role in your estrogen. Now keep in mind, when you're following these things, I say they're making a very big difference. And a lot of people assume that means you're going to immediately see a difference when I switch my shampoo, switch my body wash, and do all these other things that I mentioned on this list. And the truth is, it's simply not going to immediately show a difference. What's going to happen is your testosterone is going to start playing its role, and it needs time to develop on your brain. It needs time to help you build muscle. So it's going to take time but give it a year, and after that year, you're really going to see everything just got a lot easier suddenly. And that's because of these small changes you make that aren't necessarily for the instant gratification, the instant rewards. They're for the prolonged rewards. That's why I mentioned not having these things in my future house, because that's a lifetime reward. Something that I'm avoiding for a lifetime because I put a little bit of extra effort in. The next thing I have for you is water. Now, this is a longer topic. I could list out all the things in your water, why they're all bad, but that'll take 10 to 15 minutes. I have a video. I'll go ahead and put it in the top right for you, and you could go ahead and click on that and look at it if you're more interested in the details and what exactly is in our water. But what you need to know is that our water has estrogen in it because most water systems cannot filter out the size of a hormone molecule. So all of that gets passed through our water filtration and then you end up consuming forms of estrogen and different chemicals that are put in our water. And all of this is just overall a negative towards your hormone system. So... What's the solution? You simply buy a reverse osmosis filter and you clean your water and then drink it. Nothing too crazy. But 
Something else you need to consider is to use a steel thermos, not to be putting your water inside of a cup that's going to have plastics inside of it. And you also want to avoid plastic bottles from the store, especially in the summer when most people drink them. Because these this water in these plastic bottles is super clean, whatever, may it may have had the hormones removed from it. It may have gone through more intense filtration than normal water, but it's been sitting inside of that container for who knows how long. And when that plastic gets heated up, once again, it's going to have more of the microplastics seep into your water. So overall, avoid plastic bottles. Just bring a steel thermos instead and filter your water at home with a reverse osmosis system. This is another thing that's an investment that lasts a lifetime. You spend $300 on a reverse osmosis, $300 to $500, and it'll be something that permanently helps you. Number six on this list is your clothing. Now, you may have noticed the start showed you some sort of compression, and being a jacked individual or someone who is working on your physique, you may love compressions. It may be your chance to sort of show off and... I think showing off is a good thing in the modern day. A lot of people aren't as proud of their progress as they should be, and they put everybody else above them. That's not a good thing. That's not going to help you achieve your goals. So, yeah, I think it's great to want to look good in the clothing you're wearing, but you have to be aware that whenever you are wearing those plastic compression shirts or any shirts that aren't directly cotton, that's why I'm wearing a cotton robe. This is 100% cotton, so it is not going to be putting any microplastics into my skin. I wear this every morning for about six hours while I'm doing all my work. So while I'm doing that, then I know that's one period of time throughout my day that I don't have any microplastics going into my body, which is perfect, fantastic for me. And I recommend you do the same. Find some sort of way to remove a period of time where you're getting plastics into your body. And then, obviously, you may want to wear compressions still every once in a while. I still wear compressions sometimes. And what I have to say to that is just be careful. Make sure it's not extremely hot outside for the same reason as I mentioned earlier. And make sure that you don't wear it the entire day. Wear it to the gym. Two hours, take it off. Boom. You had it on for two hours out of your day. It's not going to make a crazy difference or it's not going to be that big of a deal. And then I have two more things to point out on this topic of clothing. First of all, your underwear. Make sure it's cotton. There's no reason to not have cotton underwear unless you're in the process of replacing your underwear, then fair enough. But you're directly having those plastics touch your balls, so avoid that. And then the other thing I'd say is to sleep naked, because when you sleep naked, obviously, once again, this is a case of no exposure to these plastics, and I think freeing down there is really going to help it play its function. The reason your balls are outside of your body is so they could remain cool. So if you have clothing on your body 24-7, then they're going to not stay as cool as they should be. So when you're sleeping, I simply recommend not to wear any underwear or any clothes in general. Number seven on this list is going to be plastic utensils. So when you're using plastic utensils specifically for cooking, then once again, this is a case where you are heating up the plastics, getting them inside of your body or inside of your food. And the simple replacement to this is just use steel and metal utensils. Use wooden spoons to stir your food and use steel silverware. That's all there is to it. Very simple tip. Number eight on this list is going to be dryer sheets. And these are just covered in chemicals. So when you end up throwing your clothes in the dryer, throwing some dryer sheets in, spinning it around and heating it up, you're practically creating a chemical stew with your clothes. And the solution is just to use wool dryer balls instead. Very cheap to replace. Number nine on this list is pesticides. Now, our food is covered in pesticides. It helps us produce them in a higher mass, and it makes foods cheaper. But if I was specifically to recommend what foods you need to get organic, I'd say anything where you don't have a skin that you peel off. So a banana doesn't really matter if it's organic because you're overall just going to peel off the skin and be eating the inside. 
there is probably some level of pesticides that get into the banana, but you don't have to worry about it as much as something such as raspberries, blueberries. But overall, it's more important that you worry about things that are directly having the pesticides sprayed on what you eat. So raspberries, blueberries, apples, all of these, you could even notice the difference in taste between an organic and a non-organic version of these, and that's because these do have pesticides in them, and these pesticides, even if they are washed off, are still going to be inside the actual food that you are consuming, so that is where I strictly only get organic from. Now, number 10 is hair gels and sprays. Now, overall, I just think it's silly putting that much effort into your hair. I think your hair really shows you the quality of your life outside of your looks. If you are a successful individual or a driven, motivated individual, then the people around you likely aren't going to care what the hell you do with your hair. So the way I recommend avoiding this is simply just buzzing it. But if you don't want to buzz it and you still want to do your hair, just use something natural. A lot of waxes are good for that. I don't know much about it because I am not a fan of it, but I'm sure you could find a specific product that fits you. Those are my 10 tips for this video. If you want five more actionable things you could remove that are endocrine disruptors, join my email list in the comments. And as always, remember, as lifelong learners, perspicacity is our grindstone for success. Keep on grinding, boys.